All right, guys. Um, now we're going to start with the next topic. That is the photochemistry of vision. That now when a person sees an object, right how that object will go and stimulate the rod cells and how those rod cells will secrete their photochemical substances the redopsin and once that redopsin has been secreted then how it will help in us to see an object that is present in light and how it will act when it is placed in a dark so that is all we're going to study right now so these are the different mechanisms which will help us to understand how redopsin has been produced and once redopsin has been produced what is its effect when it is placed in an ob in an area where there is less light and what is its effect when it's placed in an area where there is more light then we're going to study about the second mechanism that is the hyperpolarization and depolarization the inward and outward movement of the sodium ions response to light and the third is that when there is too much redopsin produced how you will have to inhibit it and if there's too little how you will produce more that is uh, about it okay First of all, you come here. Just see this diagram. And if you understand this diagram, this flow chart, you will be able to uh, understand all this, what they have written to you in these three pages. Okay. First of all, you have to come that you see an object, right? When you see an object, obviously that object will pass through that same aqueous humor, your lens, your vitreous humor, finally reaching the fovea of the retina. Now, once reaching in the fovea of the retina, it has to stimulate the rod cell. The rod cells become stimulated and, and uh, once it has been stimulated, it is going to release their photochemical that is called as your redopsin. Now, the redopsin from which it has been produced, it has been produced from the combination of your scutopsin and your 11 cis retinal. So, when this 11 cis retinal combines with your scutopsin, they're going to form what is called as your redopsin in minutes. And this 11 cis retinal, it is then converted into your all trans retinal as well. Okay? Now, the redopsin that has been formed by the combination of the scutopsin and the 11 cis retina, it will use the light energy and it will be converted into what is called as your bat or redopsin in uh, picoseconds. This bat or redopsin will then be converted into your lumi redopsin in your microsecond. The lumi redopsin will then be converted into your meta redopsin 1 in your millisecond. And your meta redopsin 1 will then be converted into meta redopsin 2 in your second. And then when this is activated, it will be causing the formation of your 11 trans retina. And also it gives a release to your scutopsin. And this 11 trans retina will then be forming your 11 trans retinol, which is required when vitamin A is present present in diet then this 11 trans retinal and retinol by enzymes isomerases will be converted in your 11 cis retinol which will then be converted into 11 cis retina this 11 cis retinal combines with scutopsin to form redopsin and again the cycle will be repeated again and again again and again until the image that has been seen is cleared i'm repeating uh, repeating it first you had your scutopsin the scutopsin, it is going to combine with 11 cis retina. Together, they're going to form what is the photoreceptor of your raw cells, redopsin. That redopsin will then use the light energy and will be converted into your bathoredopsin. The bathoredopsin will then convert into your lumiredopsin. Lumiredopsin will convert into metaredopsin 1. Metaredopsin 1 will be converted into your metaredopsin 2. Metaredopsin 2 will do two things. It will help in the formation of 11 trans retinal and also in the formation of scutopsin. The 11 trans retinal will be converted into 11 trans retinol, which is active form of vitamin A. And as uh, we need redopsin, then this 11 trans retinal and 11 trans retinol will be converted into 11 cis retinal and 11 cis retinol by the presence of an enzyme isomer. And then this 11 cis retinal will combine with your scutopsin to form redopsin. And this cycle will be repeated again and again until the requirement of redopsin is fulfilled. So that was how redopsin has been synthesized and how raw cells are excited when light strikes them. 
The second is excitation of the rods when rhodopsin is activated by light. Now that rhodopsin that has been produced, once it is hit by a light source, it will go and activate your rod cell. Now once that rod cells are activated when light strikes them, what are the events? Two types of things will happen. As we studied here when I told you that the segments consist of an outer segment and an inner segment. So, when that rhodopsin will be striked by light rays, it will cause the activation of rod cells in both in your outer segments as well as in your inner segments. Now, what are the events that are occurring, which we will study here. Now, in an inner segment, that is where you have the mitochondria, you have the cell organelles, the cytoplasm and its different organa. What will happen here is what they're telling you, telling you here. Now, for example, you are in a room where there is a lot of light, right? Once there is a lot of light, that light will come, stimulate your rod cells, they will cause the rhodopsin to be produced. And what will happen next is they will cause the opening of these sodium ion channels. Once these sodium ion channels have been opened, they will move from the inside to the outside. As sodium channels are positively signed, so they will take the positivity from the inside to the outside, making the inside more electronegative and outside more electropositive. So we can say that it causes the hyperpolarization of the inside of the membrane and depolarization on the outside of the membrane, which they have shown to you here right in your dark lights it will be present more on the outside and less on the inside up and uh, they, these channels will cause the opening and the sodium ions they will move from outside to inside causing more depolarization on the inside and more hyperpolarization on the outside and then they will cause the contraction and more focusing image form on the fovea Fovea and then you will be able to see in dark. But when you have a lot of light, you do not need more sodium ions. So as a result, the sodium instead of moving in, they will move on the outside. And as a result, it cause depolarization on the outside and uh, your hyperpolarization on the inside. Right? That was what was happening on the, uh, your, when there was light or dark rays stimulating the raw cells on the inner side. Now, when they're stimulating on the outer segments, what happens? So, this is a light source, right? The light source will come. It will stimulate your rhodopsin. The rhodopsin will then be converted into a protein that is called as a transducin. This transducin protein will go and activate your CGMP phosphodiesterase. On activating of the CGMP phosphodiesterase, it will cause the conversion of the CGMP to be converted to its inactive form 5' prime GMP. On converting into its inactive form 5' prime GMP, it will cause the closure of the sodium ion. When sodium ion channels will be closed, there will be no longer movement of the sodium ions inside. As a result, inside will remain hyperpolarized and outside will remain depolarized. So these were the events where we're happening on the inner segments and what were the events that were occurring on the outer segment membrane. Okay? All right. Um, then you have when uh, what happens is that... Um, now we're going to study that once a light ray, a light rays come, how that small amount of light ray will cause such a high hyperpolarization, such a high intensity of light to be produced. These are the different events which will take place. So once the light rays will strike your um, rod cells, first of all, your 11 cis retinal will be produced that we studied here. That 11 cis retinal, they will be converted into your methyridopsin 2. And that methyridopsin 2 is then going to be the active form of rhodopsin. It will strike the uh, methyridopsin 2. For example, you have this, right? Light comes. Your lamus is retinal is secreted and this will go and stimulate the methyridopsin 2. Convert into all trans retinal which will be stimulating methyridopsin 2. Methyridopsin 2 will then secrete more amount of scotopsin and lamus cis retina. This will then combine with lamus cis retinal and they will form in the rhodopsin. Right? Now, and then second they will can, uh, form uh, rhodopsin is basically form activated by an enzyme that is called as your trans 
transducin. This transducin is then going to go and activate different uh, enzymes or different molecules by an enzyme that is called as uh, your phosphodiesterase. The phosphodiesterase will then go and activate your CGMP molecule. Once the CGMP molecules will be activated, they will cause the sodium channels to open. As a result, the sodium ions will move on the inside and there will be molasses on the outside, resulting in more depolarization inside and more hyperpolarization on the outside. And this is then how it is going to go and excite it, right? Then, for example, if there are too much Roth cells that have been st excited or stimulated, then what will happen is that then in order to prevent it, then there will be an enzyme which will stop the production of methyridopsin 2. As well, there will be no scutopsin produced, there will be no transretinal produced, which will convert it into 11 cis retina. And this process uh, or enzyme which helps in the inhibition of the methyridopsin 2 to be converted into scutopsin and 11 cis retinal is called as uh, your redopsin kinase. Okay? And that was all for the metabolisms. Okay. Now, the autonom uh, your autonomic regulation of retinal sensitivity in light and dark adaptation. Same what we just studied about when there will be lighter, more light rays. What will happen is uh, that you already have more light rays. So, you need less redopsin to be produced. So, this process will be then repeated again, again. But this time, it will reverse in the opposite direction to prevent the formation of redopsin. So, it will be the redopsin kinase which will inhibit the metabolism too. As a result, when it's inhibited, there will be less production of redopsin too. And then you can see. The but when there is dark light, you are in a dark room. You need to see objects then there will be this process the methyridopsin lomeridopsin methyridopsin 1 then it will be methyridopsin 2 they will produce the scotopsin 11 cis retinal and the process will be and more and more amount of redopsin will be secreted so when there is inhibition of redopsin that is called as light adaptation in respect to more light and when it is less light it is called as dark adaptation which will result in the formation of redopsin okay then you have the color blindness. What happens in a color blindness is that it basically happens that your cone cells, we studied that they basically consist of your pigment colors, right? They basically consist of three types of pig pigments. You have the red, blue, and green. And they are response having different frequencies. And with respect to that, that different frequency, they will be picked up by the fovea of the retina. And from with respect to that different frequency, we are able to identify whether this color is this or this. And if all the three colors, red, blue, and green, are absorbed by the fovea of the retina with the same frequency, then the image that will be formed, that will be your white image. Now, if there is color blindness, if a person has a defect in the color pigments of the cone of your uh, cone cells, if there's a defect in your red and green color blind, then the person will not be able to see all the wavelengths that range from the formation of red and green because they have not able to have the frequency or the wavelength to adapt to the red and green. They do not have these two cones. So they will be able to see all other colors that are formed except from those colors that are formed by the combination of red or green. Such type of blindness is called as uh, your red-green color blindness. And a person who only cannot see the red color, that is called as your protonol. And a person who cannot see a green color is called as your uh, deuter and O. Oh. And the loss of this red and green color blindness is basically a genetic disorder. In the soldier, it is basically related to X chromosomes and from there they are not produced, these red and green, and there is a defect of cones. And it's a uh, treatment is that you have to insert new cones where they will not have defect of X chromosomes and the person will be able to distinguish the colors. Then you have a blue weakness that the person is unable to differentiate all the colors that have been produced from the blue color. And this is very a rare condition, not a very normal condition. Normally it is the red and green color blindness. Okay? That was a... And that was all for your color blindness.